all right guys welcome to another video so in this video we're gonna take or continue to look at you know day trading secrets and secrets that people are not talking about or discussing in the markets uh, which is so important that you learn if you have been here before you guys know that we have done this as a little bit of um, uh, like a small course so every video is uploaded to this channel so you can see it um, day by day so if you haven't seen the previous videos, I highly suggest that you go and watch the previous three videos because they, they, they are in order. Uh, now, it doesn't really matter if you start with this one or the first one, but I would recommend that you still watch them in order. OK, so basically what we're going to look at is the value of psychology when it comes to your investments. Uh, this is something that is very much forgotten about and it sounds lame. But if you look at the scientific evidence out there for the traders that are actually profitable long term, most of it does not come from their strategy or the way they're trading. It actually comes from their psychology. So it's so important that we focus on the psychology and really understand how much value there is to be uh, taken from it. And the next one is going to be the importance of the right charting software. I see a lot of people use sketchy charting software today. I don't know why. Is it the hype? I don't really know. But the importance of using real charting software uh, is so important because you need the right information. And one thing that people, uh, again, don't discuss is some brokers, uh, especially offshore brokers, uh, do not have proper charting. So just think about that. And they can be manipulated as well. So you want to use something that is really solid and uh, proven to work. And that is also backed up by institutions, preferably, of course. And then we're also going to look at the right tools to use in your investments. So there are a few tools that I want to go over here that can be really make it or break it when it comes to your investments. So they're super important. So another thing I want to look at is, like I said, we're going to use proper ch uh, ch charting software. I also want you to learn to understand microeconomics. I want you to learn to understand macroeconomics and you need to follow economic uh, calendars. These are so important because these are the three key things that we usually move the markets short term and long term. And these are great catalysts to be looking at. Because that's the information we need to try to predict the future. It's also it's always about the micro and macroeconomics. Now, following economic calendars is very important because let's say we have made an analysis on our micro and macroeconomics. Let's say, let's say our long term perspective of the unemployment rate. Let's say it's going to go down. And then we see news events happening after, let's say, two months of our long term perspective. Let's say there is a new illness coming out then our long-term perspective might change. And thanks to following the economic calendars and checking out the news, keeping up with uh, fundamentals, we're going to be able to change our long-term perspective uh, on a day-to-day, weekly-to-weekly, monthly-to-monthly basis, which is super important. Now, trading tools can help you. So you should really think about it and uh, you should somehow... You shouldn't rely on them, but you should consider having those. So a few of, of the trading tools that I want you to think about is that they should act as a little bit of a catalyst and also a little bit of a help to push you in the right directions. So economic calendars is one of the most important because it's going to help you as a day trader or investor to track market events. What is happening in the markets? What could potentially move the market? It's also going to help you to understand indexes, which is one of the most important. Indexes is basically an index about the overall market and how it's performing. It's also going to help you uh, keep a look at interest rate, which is so important about the value of cash and also about interest rate decisions. And then so much more information. So even if you have access to charts and technical analysis, it's really, really important 
that you need to solve, uh, you know, the secret puzzles in the world, especially in the investment world. And that's where fundamental analysis is so important. And yet people don't talk about this. People are so stuck with technical analysis. It should be the opposite way around. Technical analysis is actually the last thing you want to look at when you're basing a decision. So I would recommend that some traders, of course, you have to practice via demo account. I would even say if you do have a good track record from before, then maybe that's not necessary. But if you want to get into a new sector or you want to trade something foreign or start investing in a foreign territory, if you go from stocks to currency or vice versa, you need to start with a demo account. It's very stupid to play with, you, play with real money. Um, when you're learning something new, it makes no sense. It has, yeah, basically it makes no sense. Um, and it's so important that you start learning from your early mistakes because you're going to make plenty of early mistakes in your investment and trading career. And the most important that you want to do is sh you should be journaling the mistakes and you should do it in a format where you explain to yourself what went wrong why it didn't go the way your f first analysis was, was thought out. So basically, you should first write down what your analysis was. Basically, I thought this was going to happen because of this. I saw this bullish candle on the daily. It was confirming the weekly uh, support. And I saw it as, as a catalyst to continue moving upwards to the monthly resistance, let's say. And then let's say you take the trade and it fails. So you have explained what you thought before you took the trade. Explain as well what is happening during the trade or what happened during the train, trade. Explain your thought process and what you, you were seeing. And then in the end, what you should journal is why the trade did not end up working, even though your analysis was on point. And then you might have seen that on the monthly, the previous monthly candle that you didn't see, had a huge wick to the upside and was bearish. So maybe price was bullish on the daily and maybe the weekly just to go up and fill a part of that wick to then continue pushing down again and reverse. And then you write that down. Because that's what's going to help you. That's what's going to help everything stick to your brain. So what people do instead, guys, is very, very weird. What they do is they look at their charts here. And... All they're doing when they're practicing technical analysis or looking at charts or even practicing trading is that they just take trades randomly, first of all. They, they make their analysis, they map out their zones. Nothing wrong with that. They map out their zones. Okay? Let's say they, this is just, you know, a draft example. So they map out their zones and here they see, oh, look, we have a wick to the downside. And usually they stick to one, two, three time frames at most. And usually uh, where most people fail is because they dependently use the lower time frames, especially the lower time frames, because it's more exciting. That's when you know you do it wrong. Trading shouldn't be exciting. Investing should not be exciting whatsoever. They see this wick to the downside and they say, hey, price is going to reverse. This is a strong support. We're going all the way up here at least. But what they forget about is looking at the previous candle, for example, look how bearish it is. Look at this candle right there. See how bearish it is? When you have a candlestick that is that bearish, there are hidden orders and hidden volume at the 50% retracement level of this candle. Another thing to, to understand why the 50% retracement level works is you can look to the left. You have a minor support here because you can see these wicks, okay? So basically, this is just a reflex, reflection of the wicks to the left. And because people do not journal their trade properly, they take this trade, it becomes a loss. All they're going to remember is just this basic analysis that they performed. They haven't really dived into the problem and tried to solve it bit by bit. So there's no in-depth learning in their trading, in their investing, in their analysis. There's no in-depth. And when you do not have in-depth training in your analysis, you're not going to learn anything. You might think you know what you're doing, 
but in actuality, you don't. So that's why it's so important that you journal your progress because the journaling is what's going to help you learn and understand, not how many trades you're taking. So sure, chart time is super important. The 10,000 hour rule is important, but it also depends on the quality. You might not even need 10,000 hours. You might need one month, but then you have done proper journaling, meaning that you have analyzed your decisions for six hours a day, for example. So that doesn't mean trading for six hours. That might mean looking at the analysis, uh, I mean, looking at the charts for the first two hours, placing one trade or one investment decision, and then analyzing it for the rest of the, the time. And if there's no trade setups unfolding, then just journal. Journal what you're seeing, what you're thinking, why you're not entering. What are you seeing in the markets that is not in favor of you wanting to enter? So even if there's no trading opportunities, you can still get to work, right? <laughs> it's just as simple as that. So again, please think about these things. People don't talk about it, but these are the secrets, guys. So automation can help master the secrets of trading. So you want to get it to, to a point where you're kind of doing everything automated. So your whole structure of from the point of your decision making to your execution to your exit should all be followed in an automated process. And this comes with time and practice. The more traders you're going to execute uh, in the future, the better you're going to be. So one of the most important factors as well, too, if you look at the scientific reports out there now about the statistics of day traders and investors and their success rate is that some of the top, top, top performers are actually using a 100% automated process meaning that they basically use algorithms to make their trading decisions and they base it on high frequency computers. Now, of course, that should be something next level. That should be if you in the future want to start your own fund and you might want to use high frequency computers that are run by algorithms. So you, you remove the human aspect of the de decision making, which is, I believe, one of the crucial things to actually get even higher returns. But that does not necessarily mean that you need it in the beginning, beginning to become profitable. Not at all. But it should be an end game goal if you really want to take it to a higher level. Because automation is probably the most important. Full automation. When you want to take it to the next level. And this is again proven scientifically. Now, looking at the macroeconomics... You basically have the GDP, so gross domestic product. You have gross, uh, sorry guys, gross national product, which is, which is GMP. You have demand and supply. You have the consumption part. You got the investment part. You got the government spending part. And then you have net exports. So that's the macroeconomics. If you want to know the difference, the macroeconomics is basically the whole economy, so the GDP. You look at inflation which means uh, usually general price level. You look at the employment and unemployment rate. You look, you look at aggregate demand and you look at productive capacity of econ uh, the economy. That's the macroeconomics. Now, the microeconomics is looking at the individual markets that you're looking at. So this is more in-depth. Macro is more at the scale where you should begin. And then you should use microeconomics at the, as, as the next step to narrow, narrow it down even further. Okay, so individual markets, effect on price of a good, individual labor market, individual consumer behavior and supply of good. Why this is important is, for example, when you see high unemployment rate, you have to look at you have to look into what sectors are being affected by the unemployment. So if, if we have 10 percent unemployment rate, let's say. In what sectors are being hit the most or what sectors are being hit the most? 
let's say the tech sector, let's say a total percentage of the tech sector only has a 1% unemployment rate, right? So they have a 1% unemployment rate out of that 10%, okay? That basically means that the 1% unemployment rate compared to before you had a 10% unemployment rate, it didn't move so much. So the tech sector is basically keeping the same statistic as they had maybe the year before or maybe the past two years. So you know that the tech sector is solid, right? Even though the the unemployment rate is super high because it's 10%, but you got to go deeper and you got to look at the individual labor market. Because you cannot panic because the unemployment is high. And this is another mistake that so many do today. You have a market crash. You have a pandemic going on. Look how much money people made during this pandemic. It's insane. Everyone thought that the market was going to crash, right? And they still think the market is going to crash. Because the macroeconomics, the numbers, right, are horrible. The macro numbers are not good, okay? But what they forget about is the microeconomics are still solid. Right? Small businesses got hit the hardest. But because of small businesses got hit the hardest, the big businesses get even a bigger share of the market. And they performed even better. Insane, right? But that's the, that's the importance. You, you start with macroeconomics, then you look for microeconomics because th- it's on this side you find the opportunities. Okay? Because people stop at this. This is what creates panic. Irrational behavior. And here people create rational behavior. So again, if the unemployment rate was 1% in the tech sector, you know that the tech sector would probably be the best place to put your money now. So let's say you have had money in, uh, let's say you have had money in consumer products. And now because, you know, people are losing their income, they're losing their jobs, people are not going to be able to spend as much money. You see the unemployment uh, being increased in the consumer sector and you have money invested in the consumer sector, and then you look at the unemployment rate of the tech sector and you see that it's only 1% and it's still uh, in high revenue, all you do is you sell your consumer and you move it to the tech sector. And once you have done that, you wait again, you follow up macroeconomics, microeconomics, you do this continuously, and then you just move the funds around. And I know it sounds so basic and it really is. It's all about just following up and waiting and waiting and waiting and being patient. If your charts are looking something like this, very messy, a lot of signals, um, not good. Now, if your charts are looking like this, but you're basing it on macro and macroeconomics, for example, this doesn't really matter. Then if you have uh, buy signals in, in favor of your analysis that you did, then uh, <laughs> I guess that's even better. But in my opinion, keep your charts clean. If they're looking really messy like this, again, this is not what you want to look at. You want to base everything based on fundamental analysis, not technical analysis. Don't focus and get caught into the charting software or the look of it. If you look at this, this looks like a casino. If you've ever been to a casino and gambled, you see a lot of colors and why they have a lot of different colors that are popping and moving around uh, is because there's scientific evidence that your brain releases dopamine and serotonin. So you get some kind of a high and a rush as a feeling and it heightens your emotions, makes you want to gamble more even if you lose. And they have also figured out that there's something to the human behavior and psychology that when you lose, 
you want to make it back and you're willing to risk even more, which is just completely messed up when you think about it. It makes no logical sense. We're supposed to be logical beings, yet we do the most stupid things. So if your charting software looks like this, just remember that all you want to focus on is you want to focus on the buy and the sell and that's it. Don't look at all the colors. Don't get fooled with all the colors. It's not something that should be exciting. You should only open this part of your charting software when there's time to buy or sell. That's it. You can keep a look at ticker alerts. You can have a watch list. Um, don't have an account summary. That's not so good to focus on. Um, you can have a level two up as well, uh, an order flow, but that should only be when it's time to enter or if you want to see something in your favor. Let's say there's a fundamental analysis. So there's news coming out with Apple and Apple are, uh, let's say there has been something leaked. So Apple is um, creating a new chip that is twice as fast and it's going to be available on the next uh, components of the new Apple devices coming up the next year, for example. And then you look at the uh, level two and you also look at the order flow and you see that, you know, there's coming in so many buyers right now. People are just buying into the stock. When you see something like that, you might say, well, maybe it's worth uh, investing in the company because right now a lot of people are getting in. But then you, 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 base that up, you base that decision based on something that you read, right? And if you see that Apple has now something leaked and they're going to come up with twice as fast of a chip than they already have, and you already know that, let's say, the Apple products are already superior to their competitors when it comes to the processing speed. And then you hear that they're going to have twice as fast now. Well, that means that they're going to continue probably with a high probability outdo their competitors for the next coming uh, year or years. So it's not more complicated than that. Now, the next thing I want to focus on is the psychology. It's so important because here's what people do. They overdo everything. You, you can basically be your own uh, psychiatrist <laughs> and you don't really have to go to talk to anyone in particular if you learn to understand your emotion and how you work as a human being and you can do this by reading a lot and learning psychology in in you know an overall um, aspect because it's so important but if you think that investing or trading is all about price charts and data you're completely wrong uh, day trading is so much more about trading psychology than anything else and investing as well, like we talked about in the beginning. Uh, the importance of your investment psychology is you, you need to be open to what is going on in, in your own head and your own decisions and what you're doing that may cause your, your wins or your losses. And you need to be honest. Every day you should look in yourself in the mirror and be honest to yourself. So, there's no surprise that so many of the famous investors we have today are usually also not experts, I would say, but they're very good in the field of mental health. If you look at a lot of the most successful investors in the world today, they, if you look at interviews with them or, or overall talks that they do, they talk so much about mental health. And it makes no sense, right? Because these people are making so much money. Why, why are they so much focused on the mental health aspect of everything? Why not the, the finance aspect? Why not the engineering aspect? What, why not the entrepreneurial a aspect? Why is it always about mental health? Well, because that's where it starts, right? How your emotion works, how you work as a person is basically, you're, 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 I mean, you are your decision maker in this life. So if you don't have parents that are controlling you or friends or influence somewhere else around, the only thing that is controlling your decisions is you and your emotions. So if you don't have control of your emotions or your own ego or your thought process, you can run into a lot of problems. 
So basically, invest in your own introspection. Meditation is one of the key things to evolve as a human being. Meditation, and especially transcendental meditation, it's so important to understand that you're more than just your ego. You're, you're something outside of your thinking brain or your thinking thoughts. You can actually observe yourself from an out, outer perspective. So your thought process that is going on right now, that's simply your ego. And sometimes your ego is not the best person to listen to. So you have to be very rational. And learning to meditate is going to teach you and see this firsthand. That it's, uh, you're so much more than your ego, basically. Understand your motives, motives, understand your goals and your fears. If you're in a desperate need of money, investing money is not going to solve that desperateness. You know what's going to solve that? More knowledge. Go read more. Become more valuable. Because then it's impossible to be poor if you have knowledge. It's 100% impossible. Because companies that make money need people that can think, that have knowledge, to be able to push their own companies further. So if you have value, if you have knowledge, you will always find a way to make an income. So investing is not going to solve that problem. Investing should be the second path. Once you have built knowledge, once you start working, you need to make that money work for you. Because right now you're trading time for money. You shouldn't be trading time for money for, your, for the rest of your life. You can do it for a few years. So you can set up your investment side. But as a human being, you should have all of these things together. That's why people who just full-time trade or full-time invest get very depressed. Because it's a very boring thing to do. And you might think that all you want to do is sit at a beachfront and invest. And that's not even how it works. Like I said, investing is a lot about reading. You have to read a lot. So yeah, sure, you can sit at the beach, but you're going to be reading anyways. So I don't know how much you're going to enjoy just sitting and flashing or drinking piña colada. It's impossible to eliminate, you know, bad emotions. And it's also super hard to manage your emotions when you're investing. But it's so crucial. And it's these intense emotions that you want to focus on. These emotions that make you either feel like a rush, super happy or super depressed and low. Those are the two sides you want to focus on. And you want to focus on both the positive, like I said, and the negative. Very important. Because they will play a bad joke on your investments. So it's impossible to eliminate all emotions. Of course, you're never going to be able to do that. But you will learn to be able to manage to control them and know the type of behaviors that you're conducting that usually leads to something bad happening or having a bad outcome. One thing that I want you to focus on right now, so skip everything else I have said and just listen to these things right now. So please focus on what I'm about to say right now. Never trade or invest based on greed or revenge. Let me repeat that. Never trade or invest based on greed or revenge. If you do it that way, I can 100% promise you that you will fail and you will lose everything. Absolutely everything. So if you're ready to lose everything, go ahead, my friend. But you have been warned. And if you look at the scientific evidence when it comes to investment success and trading success, this is one of the key factors of the whole pie that breaks traders and investors. And it also breaks their family. It breaks their friendship. It breaks their financial planning. There's not going to be any traveling. 
there's not going to be any income because you're going to become depressed. And you're going to start losing the most important things in your life just because of greed and revenge. Greed and revenge is why the world is a very dark place today. That's it. So if you understand those two emotions that are driving you, eliminate them right away. Be patient, man. Start small until you boost your confidence and become good, build a track record. And then if you do not have more money to invest, you can gather investors, please. It's not as hard as you think. If you can make money, people will invest in you. So learn the trade and become good at it first. And don't stress it. You don't have to turn $100 into $1 million to reach $1 million. What you do is you show that you can get a consistent return on $100. You show this to investors. Say you show them a track record of two years with minimal drawdown and great profit success. And better yet, you show them that you only conducted maybe 12 trades a year or 12 investment decisions. That's all you made. And you made a 20% return. And then you, you build up like a small PowerPoint or keynote presentation showing what sectors you're good at, why they should be investing in you. Because rich people want to diversify their investments and they, and they want experts in different fields. That's how businesses works. So if you understand these com- key components, you, my friend, will become successful no matter what. And school does not teach this, but you can, te- you can learn this yourself. And it's not, uh, so many people blame universities for not being good enough. University only teaches you how to think. It teaches you problem, problem solving. So if you have gone to university and you have passed university, you should be able to pass the questions you're having about life. Like, how do I make more money? How do I increase my income? How do I get a better job? Because if you really put down the time and effort in university and you did study hard and you did solve the problems, then you should adapt the same mentality and the same uh, aspect to your own life. People like Elon Musk are geniuses. Of course, for them, university is a waste of time. But these people are born geniuses. If you look at their early childhood, they're crazy smart. And not only that, the environment they're involved in, like his father, also a successful engineer. Imagine being raised by a successful engineer. The things that your father or family overall is imprinting into you, what you're seeing, what you're learning, your first-hand experience of your life, your point of view as a child. And then let's say you or me, for example, if we come from humble backgrounds, there's no engineer in the family, maybe there's not even a high school degree. It's going to be the behaviors you're going to learn and adapt to and involve with and your point of view might be very different and you might be in need of university because you got to learn how to think. Okay? And the only thing you will ever be able to understand these things is by knowledge. And this is when you also will criticize the biggest thinkers we have in the world and that's something that is so important because that's how we evolve as beings. So you have to trust your own decisions. Forums... Uh, discussion with other successful investor people or social networks, it can be very helpful, no doubt. But too much data and additional no- noise is just going to further complicate things. And it's going to make you doubt your decisions. And you don't want to doubt it. You want to execute. So follow the strategy you have and just stay consistent. Consistent, And I will promise you, it, w- it will all eventually make sense. It will all eventually make sense. So trading and being impulsive or investing and being impulsive do not correlate with each other. Okay, they should not be in the same room. Guys, I hope you learned something from this video. We will continue in the next one. Um, I want to wish you a good day and uh, I will see you in the next video. Take care, guys.